Who of you thinks that he or she has got a really good memory? Please raise your hand. Okay, I do admit at this point it was a rather unfair question. Nevertheless, I find it quite interesting that really few people are really content in their memory. I also think it's getting worse and worse. More and more people let their partner's name be tattooed on their bodies. <laughs> but it's of course mostly due to miscomprehension. Of course, you know far more often where your key is than you forget it. Just no one will praise you for it. It's easy to say, well, you have a memory like a thief if it's once missing. But no one will say, hey, you brought your keys again today? That's five in a row, right? How amazing is that? You should be on TV. Now, that's not really going to happen. And if you, for example, want to perform memory on TV, you need to do quite a bit more. I have the pleasure nowadays to do that quite a few times. And also in our memory championships, the competition is quite fierce. I see when I say memory championships, I still look in quite some puzzled faces. What is it? Is it like the Olympic Games, just with no muzzles? It's actually not that far off. You've got a mental decathlon, 10 different disciplines we compete in, like memorizing names and faces, historic dates, but it's also digits or playing cards. For example, you've got the Numbers Marathon, where we get one hour of memorization time to memorize as many digits in order as possible, followed by two hours to write down from memory what we can remember, voluntarily. And the world record for that stands at more than 3,000 digits. And today, I would like to take all of you on a journey into the mind of these memory champions. You will explore and try out yourself one of the methods used by them and learn how it might work. Because quite often, when I am allowed to perform memory, for example, I get one question, which is, Boris, can you tell me, when did you realize you have the skill? I sometimes like to answer, well, that's simple, but when I studied physics, that radioactive spider bit me. Since then, I can do that. Also read minds, fly and breathe fire. Obviously, that's nonsense. I can't fly. Um, no. What I mean is, of course, I never like, realized I had a skill. It's something I learned. And this is actually a really important message I would like to start with. A great memory is achievable and it's actually easy to learn. And I got in contact with memory training when I was a student. It helped me a big deal at college, at university, study two master's courses in the time of one with distinction, still having time for extracurricular activities, enjoying myself a lot. But I also started to wonder, is it actually true? Everyone can use that. Or do you need some talent? Or maybe even a specific brain? Maybe at this point, I would like to ask you to raise your hands to two fists like this. Maybe hold it together in front of your chest and look down on that, please. What you do see now is an easy and simple model of your brain. Yeah. So the size is quite, quite correct. It's well, volume fits quite nicely. It's always nice to see some min peaking left and right. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a different story. Um, what this tells us, of course, is that the room we've got up here, we make quite good use of. So learning cannot imply that the brain is growing and growing. Please fold your hands now like this. Because this reminds us that learning actually means that we build new connections in our brain. Existing neurons, nerve cells in our brain build new connections whenever we learn. And the interesting thing is they try to always do that when they're active at the same time. When two neurons are active at the same time, they try to connect. It's partly what Eric Kandel got the Nobel Prize for and what we know with the famous saying, fire together, wire together. Keep that in mind because we will come back to that. Because I first would like you to introduce you to the brains of the memory champions. Because during my PhD, I had the pleasure to study these. How do you do that? You use the famous MRI machine. So you don't need to harm anybody, but you can have a look at the brains from the outside. And actually, there is some reason to assume to find something. Because there's a pretty famous study you might know from London, where they investigated using MRI the brains of London taxi drivers. What does that have to do with memory? Quite a bit, because to be a taxi driver in London, you need a really good memory of the map of London and a lot of landmarks, hotels, restaurants, and so on. And indeed, the scientists found out that in London taxi drivers, a specific part of the brain, a specific part of the hippocampus, well known for spatial navigation and map memory, is enlarged, is bigger than in other forks. So we assumed, well, memory champions can memorize even more than the taxi drivers, so we should also find something there, right? But you can already guess it. That was not the case. Anatomically, by structure, the brain of a memory champion and that of a match controls does not differ. It gets more exciting if you look closer. Because then you see that in terms of connectivity, how 
brain regions are connected in the brain of the memory champions, there is a difference because it's far more connected. And also you see far more activity when a memory champion tries to memorize something. And then if I ask a memory champion, well, how do you do that? Yeah, you, I get the answer you already got from me before. Well, I learned how to do it using memory techniques. And to introduce them to you, I brought this model. I like it a lot. It shows you in the roof, the memory. And the memory should be supported, like in the house roof here by the pillows, representing different mnemonic techniques, but it's memory techniques. But they all have the same foundation. They are all based on the same principle of visual thinking, thinking in images. If you think in images, you can engage, activate more brain regions, and by that make more connections, and by that learn better. I know that still sounds rather theoretical, and maybe you've heard about it but never experienced it, therefore I would really like to try it out with you. And for that, I would like to show you the first pillow, the method of loci. I wonder, could you please raise your hand if you, you don't need to explain it, but have heard the term method of loci before? It's not very many. Maybe memory palace is a similar concept, a little bit more. Or just the idea that you picture a set of locations, like a way or a journey, and then you put images on the different locations to later retrieve them. Does that sound familiar? Yeah, still in the minority. But actually, that's already quite a nice summary. Our memory is really good in storing spatial locations and in making associations. Well, let's maybe um, test it briefly. And you could think of um, the front door of your house or your apartment, wherever you live. Try to see it, and then try to picture opening it and looking inside. Well, quite a few close the door right away. Should have cleaned up before. That's okay, but I think you get what I mean. You have a quite good impression. I know in my place there's first the wardrobe, the bathroom, the living room. I don't know exactly how many tiles are there in the bathroom, but I know the big things quite well. I never learned that on purpose, but my brain stored it by itself. And the amazing thing is not that you know your apartment, but what you can do with it. But since we all live in different places and we are too big of a group to have a walk now, I would like to introduce you to the buddy list. The buddy list is a list of 10 locations we are now going to memorize together. And for that, I'd like to invite you to stand up once more, please. Stand up once for me. And please join me in. We have to memorize 10 locations. We start at the bottom of the feet. Please join me. The feet are number one. Then maybe a little squat, just a little one. The knees are number two. Then the thigh is number three. I include the pocket of my jeans, the thigh, number three. First up the bottom, the bottom is number four. Can you raise your hand, please? Your hand has five fingers. Can you put it on your belly, please? On your own belly. <laughs> <laughs> the fifth location is the belly. Number one, where is the feet? Two is the knees. Three is the thigh. Four is the bottom. Five is the belly. Six is the chest. Seven is the shoulders. Eight is the throat. Nine is the mouth. Ten are the eyes. Five is the belly. Six is the chest. Seven is the shoulders. Eight is the throat. Nine is the mouth. And ten are the eyes. Okay, have a seat. That was quite easy, wasn't it? I would have to say, wow, great performance, but that would be a lie. <laughs> Anyone can do that. <laughs> Why is that so simple? Well, of course, we know how the body looks like. Nevertheless, these locations were still a bit random. I could also have picked mouse and nose, but since the order made sense, it's really easy to remember it. And yet again, the great thing is what you can do with it. Because now I have a task for you, and now I want you to memorize the list of 20 totally random words in order. Of course, using memory techniques, using the body list. We have got 20 words, so you already know we have got 10 locations. We put two words at each location, and very important, we already know the order. So the locations we go through in order, so the first two words go to the feet, then the knees, and so on. How to connect the words to the location? Well, by images, by visual thinking again, of course. And so I stress the word images here, you can include other senses as well. Like, do you hear something, smell something, do you feel something? Include all senses in this. And even though it feels a bit weird, please join me on it, because then you can join this journey and experience it yourself. And the first two words we want to remember are the words moss and cow. And for that, I have to do something with the feet. So maybe I picture I put my shoes away and the socks, and I left a little hike through a moss. I picture how it feels like, how it looks like, how it smells. And while I wander through this moss, I suddenly meet a cow. So there's a cow standing and maybe chewing on the moss. So I walk in the moss, there's a cow chewing on it. I go on, and from all the walking, I get a bit tired and maybe have a little rest on a tree stump that is there. And the moment I sit down, suddenly from the side, there comes the queen of England and has a seat on my lap, but she's very noble, so in front on the knees. 
that is totally ludicrous. Yeah. <laughs> But you can picture it, and that's what it's all about. And before I realize what's happening, maybe offer her the seat, she takes out a bell and loudly rings the bell. So on the knees, we remember queen and bell. We go on, the next location is a sigh. Please feel your sigh getting really, really warm, really hot. And you wonder why you grab in your pocket and you see there is a light bulb in your pocket. And it is on, that's why your sigh got so warm. And you wonder why it's not in a socket, but it's clearly on. So there suddenly comes a bull running towards you and eats the bulb. So I've got the bulb making my thigh warm, and the bull come and eats it. Next location, bottom, exactly. So maybe you picture you're tired in the morning, maybe a little hangover. You go to the bathroom and see in the mirror your bottom, and you get shocked because you realize there's a freshly made tattoo on it. <laughs> Not again. Laser removal of the unicorn cost me a fortune. It's getting worse, because this tattoo nicely shows Peter Pan eating a hamburger. For that, you will now remember Peter and hamburger forever on your bottom. Fifth location, the hands, it's the belly. So in front of your belly, you see a bear. And maybe he takes his hand, his paw, and tries to hit you, but he only scratches you, leaving a line. So bear and line for the belly. Number one, we're the feet, we're in the moss, we meet the cow. On the knees, there's a queen ringing a bell. In my pocket, I have the light bulb. The bull comes and eats it. And the bulb was on, so that's why it was warm. My bottom, the tattoo of Peter Pan eating the hamburger. At the belly, the bear leaving the lion. At the chest, maybe you feel a little tickling because you look down and see on your chest, there's like a miniature horse and someone is mad riding it. A mad rider on a miniature horse is going around your chest. And already this location is covered, so we can go on to the shoulder. Maybe have a little look on your shoulder. Look down on your shoulder now. Because on your shoulder, you see a little pope. How cute. The queen is already here. It's a great event, so let's welcome the pope. And he's eating pizza. So the pope is sitting on my shoulder eating pizza. We go on to the throat. A bit more difficult. The words are key and chef. So maybe you picture someone tickling you with a key on your throat. You see, oh, it's a chef. That's interesting. Maybe he wants to raise your appetite. So, so you feel it's a cold key. Someone's tickling you with a key or keys on your throat. A chef does it. Next one is more easy. The words are love and Eiffel Tower. It's a mouse. So I picture a kiss, of course. It reminds me of love. And where could it be more romantic than at or maybe on top of the Eiffel Tower? I close my mind, forget everything around me, don't even realize how one of the many pickpockets steals my wallet. And the moment I open my eyes, the tense location, I see a book flying towards me and shout, get that guy arrested for book and arrest at the eyes. The book flies towards me, I get this guy arrested. Fifth location was a belly, the bear leaves the lion. On the chest, there's a mad rider. On the shoulder, there sits a pope eating pizza. On my throat, it tickles with keys. Who does it? The chef. It's a mouse, has a kiss for love, an Eiffel Tower. I open the eyes again, I see the book, and get that person arrested. What do you need to do to remember these 20 words? Well, of course, we've got the body list. So we need to start down there and try to think what was at the feet. And now it's not my turn, it's your turn, so shout in as loud as you can which words. So at the feet we have... Most. The knees. Green. 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 Bell. In the pocket I have the... Bob. It's on, there's a... Bob. On the bottom the tattoo of... He takes the... Hamburg. Great. At the belly, there I see bear, lion. On the chest, head, rider. Great. Someone on the shoulder, bow, eating something tickets at the throat. He, chef. Great. At the mouse, love, Eiffel Tower. I open the eyes and see the and get it. Wow. That's, that's quite well. Yeah, please go ahead. Because it's 20 random words, you just must in order. And order is something really difficult. And not just that, you could also go backwards. Like I could sing, what was at the eyes? Book, rest. Great. I can ask individual <laughs> items, like what came like after Pope? Pizza. Pizza, great. What came before Bell? Queen. So you even can exactly go to the individual items. So that's, that's really strong. Normally you cannot do that with memory. And of course, in that short period of time, I didn't change your brain, right? And it's really strong because if you look at these words once again, they don't make any sense either. It's just totally random information. Or uh, is it? Does anyone see anything hidden in there? 
if I say geography, yeah, I hear a little mumbling here and there. Congratulations, all of you just memorized correctly the 10 biggest metropolises of Europe in order by number of inhabitants. Oh. Uh, <laughs> let's look again. So the biggest one, Moss and Cow, is Moscow. Great. The Queen lives in London. The bulb, what was with the bulb? It's a tricky one. It's on, right? The bulb is on. The bull comes eating it. Is on Bo? Istanbul. Istanbul. Yeah, it's a bit tricky. It's the third one. <laughs> the rest is easier. Peter, Hamburger, Petersburg, Berlin, Mad Rider is Madrid, Herb is in Rome, Kiev and Chef, Kiev, We've got Paris and Bucharest. So that's the 10 biggest metropolises of Europe you just memorized in order. <laughs> Go ahead, thanks. <laughs> and if you take one final moment to like contemplate what we have done, why this works, Many people might say, well, now I need to remember so much more. Like, uh, first the locations, then the images and the stories, and then even what it means. So that's quite a lot, isn't it? A lot more I need to remember. And yes, that's true, it is. But because you do that, you engage so many more brain regions, so many more different memory systems, that you build so many more connections, that it's well, well worth it. And of course, if you really want to apply it, you need some training. Like, you just got in contact with this mess for the first time. In one of my studies, I had the pleasure to have students who practiced that for six weeks, 30 minutes a day. Six weeks, 30 minutes a day, that's not nothing, it's quite a bit, but it's not too much either. And that was enough to more than double, on average, in tasks like remember, remembering names, words, or digits in their memory performance in just six weeks, 30 minutes a day. And again, these were not the champions, these were just average students. Sometimes people then wonder, well, do I still need it nowadays? I can look up so much stuff online, or people think, isn't it now, like, this thing of understanding, of comprehension, is it an issue? I think uh, it's not because if you have it in memory, you can start to understand it. It doesn't build understanding, it doesn't build comprehension, that's correct, but it enables it, because you have it in your memory then. And also, if you can look up stuff, it means if you don't have it in your memory, you cannot connect other stuff to it. If it's in your memory, you can build more and more networks, more and more connections. You can also build ideas coming up from it. And therefore, I profited highly from it. I hope I could convince you there's something to it. It's maybe even a bit of fun. I would like to ask you to invite you to try it out. Maybe see later if you still remember the words, because it's not just short-term memory. You will know it for a long time. And try using it, because it's a really great tool. It's really beneficial. And if you liked it, share it. Inspire other people, maybe you know someone who learns, maybe share the video, let them know there is the stuff, and have them give it a go, because it's really worth it. In my opinion, it's an idea worth remembering. Thank you. <laughs>